Hey, good morning and welcome to the ZP um, vlog and podcast. So every Sunday at 8am, um, London time, we like to do this vlog and podcast and just do a roundup of the news from this week. So first thing I want to do is just say that we put a video out there um, this week um, and it was really regarding a conference that we went to in the UK. It was the SCI um, Electrochemistry Conference for PhDs. They're you know, PhDs from generally the UK and Ireland were able to present the material from their PhDs and sort of get those early experiences um, about talking about their work. So we went there, it was in Loughborough, and um, it was actually, well, it was very good standard, it was, it was excellent. Um, so that's some of the news from Zimmer and Peacock this week. We also had our um, ZP Developer Zone um, podcast, I'm sorry, vlog this week, so every week we do at 8 a.m. Um, London time on a Thursday, we do a um, webinar um, on behalf or for our um, ZP Developer Zone members. And this week we talked about um, using the ADI board. So analog devices have a board for, um, let's say, biosensor developers. Um, so we had a question in from one of our um, collaborators they have some of our glucose sensors and they were having some problems and um, with the ADI board. So we were able to kind of try and advise them around that. Um, we also had another um, client who was struggling to get um, linearity with their glucose sensor. And so we were able to um, advise um, that person on how to um, get their glucose sensor to work. Essentially, what was happening with that was they had a signal at zero millimolar. Well, no signal, but they had a base at zero millimolar. And then I think they would have a response to something like two millimolar. But then um, they wouldn't get any more um, response after that. And so we gave them some advice about how to get, um, let's say, more signal or more linearity out of their sensor. Um, so some other news from Zimmer Peacock for this week is um, we also had quite a few of us at a, at a conference in Norway called Sensor Decade. So Sensor Decade is Norway's first uh, as a conference around um, sensors. And so of course ZP was there. And we were there with um, talking about our technology and talking about our applications. And we had some of our you know, good colleagues from the University of Southeast Norway, USN, myself and Evan um, were also there. And it was a very well attended, um, let's say, conference. And we we, we talked about um, electrochemistry being the sort of bridge between biology and the digital world. I sort of personally feel that electrochemistry is almost the purest science um, between biology and digital. And that's because electrochemistry directly gives you an electron many um, an electron then is you know fits very well into our electronic world and from our electronic world we can go into our digital world um but i think other techniques um like optical you know you have a photon as your source of signal then you might have a photo multiplier tube which then turns the photon into an electron and then you can start measuring the electron but for us at zp you know we sort of see you know the the purest way of getting that electron so that you can start your dig your start your digital world is um, electrochemistry. Um, so we were glad to go to Sensor Decade, and we were glad for the support of our colleagues. And you know, it was a really well attended um, conference. Now, also, we put out some um, news this week, really about um, ZP because of our expertise in let's say regulatory. Um, and what I mean by that is um, Zimmer and Peacock, we, you know, we're obviously contract developers and contract manufacturers of biosensors, but we also are experts on ISO 13485 um, and on the sort of ability to get CE marked or get FDA approval, etc. So we are um, offering that um, as a service as well, um, very heavily these days. Um, Something else, one of our um, engineers put out a really nice graphic around um, the number of sensors that we actually have at Zimmer and Peacock. And so we were able to um, 
you know, we put out a graphic, but it really covers the fact that, you know, we have these glucose sensors, these pH sensors, these alcohol sensors, these uric acid sensors, these ketone sensors, these cortisol sensors, and these testosterone sensors. I just want to say good morning to Ahmet. Nice to see you, Ahmet. And so um, it's just a sort of, you know, to say that, you know, as EP, we do have probably the, by far now the world's largest range of um, biosensors. And I think I'll touch upon it in a minute that um, we've actually got a new sensor this week as well. So I did touch upon it, but at ZP, we are um, able to consult on a number of aspects around bringing medical diagnostics um, to the market. So we do what's called MDR. Or we consult on MDR issues, IVDR issues and FDA issues. Um, and so ZP now, it's more than just contract development, contract manufacturer of electrochemical biosensors. It's also the consulting and expertise around what it takes to get um, regulatory approval. So we call it RAQA, so Regulatory Affairs Quality Assurance. That's now something that we um, also offer and talk about. So I said that we had um, a new sensor this week, and I mean, it's a bit of an it's a bit of an important one. Um, it's testosterone. So obviously, testosterone is I think they call it the male hormone. You know, but it's it's definitely a hormone that's associated strongly with you know human health, human wellness. Um, we've developed a um, a sensor for it. I mean, I love these limits of detection that we discuss. Um, so we zero um, picomolar. So. 10 to the minus 12 molar. So we've been testing at 1 picomolar, 10 picomolar, 100 picomolar, and 1 nanomolar. These are extraordinarily low concentrations, and it's really a testament, I would say, to the power of electrochemistry that we can actually do, let's say, this kind of work. Um, so you know, thank you to the team for developing that, which really then sort of dovetails into um, one of my last comments, which is, you know, at ZP now, when I look at the off-the-shelf um, biosensors we have, we have a um, testosterone sensor, so we just released that this week. Um, we also have a um, an androstenone sensor, so androstenone is associated with um, sort of bad smells, let's say, in um, some meat products, so we've also got an androstenone product, um, and we've also got a um, a cortisol sensor as well. I think cortisol, cortisol and testosterone are some of the most, say, interesting um, hormones, especially when it comes to um, human health. So, at ZP, we at least have three um, hormone sensors, and you know we can make these available uh, to our clients and through collaborations. Um, let's say so. Um, it's been an interesting week because personally I've been in Norway this week um, just to say that next week we're actually going to be in Finland in a town called Ulu but um, if I was to kind of summarize the week it's been you know pretty intense um, we've had our um, well first of all you know we, we put out that we were at the SCI electrochemistry conference that was pretty good then we had our um, weekly webinar and I think that's good because um, Ahmet, who's joined us this morning, he really likes his sort of bioelectronics. And so the whole sort of webinar around the use of the ADI um, board might be um, interesting to, to him. Um, we also then have our um, census decade that was in Norway this week. And so, you know, a big portion of the team there. We're also starting to expand again the range of biosensors. So I talked about the testosterone sensor. And we're also expanding our service offering and starting to talk about the um, regulatory affairs um, part as well. And so what I will do is I'll wrap up for this week. Um, I appreciate the news. No, it's, you know, it's fine. We want to keep it nice and short and, and compact. So I want to say thank you to Ahmed for joining us. Ahmed, stay in touch. And otherwise, I will catch up with you all soon and take care.